Hi, this is Judy from Gear Diary, and today we're going to take a look at the Iceco VL60 Dual Zone Refrigerator and Freezer. It's portable, but it's so big, you might be tempted just to put it somewhere and leave it. That didn't work out for Kev and me on our recent trip to Utah, but if you've got room in your truck or inside your RV or in the back of your station wagon or minivan, it should be just fine. As you can see, it's got a metal clad body with reinforced corners. It's also got steel reinforced handles and steel handles, steel clips on the front, and on the back, it has steel hinges. So it's really well made. It looks like it's built to last and I have no doubt that it will. So let's take a look at it. On the front, there's an inset module that allows you to change the modes, like if you wanna change from eco mode to max mode. These are all things I talk about in my review, by the way, so be sure to just read that. Power button, up and down button, and the display, which is about an inch by 2.2 inches, will let you know the temperature of each side and um, give you a really quick, easy way to like keep up with what's going on with the cooler. Over here on the right, there's an AC plug or AC port a DC port and a 15 amp fuse so it's easily accessible if you ever have like an issue and you need to I don't know change out a fuse because you blew it and that is the exterior of the Iceco VL60 in a nutshell so let's open it up and take a look one of the things that I really like about this cooler is that it doesn't need a charging block this is all that's needed in order to plug it in and use it, whether straight from your car or from a external battery source, like the Blue Eddy AC200 Max that we used on our trip. Or you can plug it in using AC, which is what that cable's for. And they just plug onto the side, no big deal. It also includes a manual and a really nice insulated cover that you can see more about in my review. This side, the right side, is a little bit smaller than what's on the left. Over here, you can see there's a ton of room. This is like a really good side over here on the left to put refrigerator items and maybe put your freezer items over here. The reason the right side is so much smaller is because all of the compressor and other um, converter components are located in this box. So just something to keep in mind whenever you're trying to plan out how you want to do it. I like that there are LED lights that will glow when you lift either side when it's powered on. So it's handy for at night, you know, when you want to like get in and I don't know, grab some ice cream or a drink. So now I think it's time that Kevin and I sit down and tell you about actually using this when we took our trip to Utah and wound up camping off grid for quite a few days. So sit down with me and let's talk about our trip to Utah and how the ice code did while we were traveling. Okay. Uh, I mean, we didn't need ice at any point, right? Um, which was really handy. I mean, uh, draining, worrying about food getting wet, uh, you know, it's a constant battle. Having to buy ice on the road. E yeah, even like, I mean, we have a nice Yeti cooler, but uh, I mean, they hold ice for a while, but it's never long enough. Um, I like this thing. I liked it right away because it's got like this military sort of look and my Tacoma kind of has like a military feel Your to it. Your lunar rock Tacoma. Lunar rock, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's sturdy. It looks cool. Um, if you just saw it sitting somewhere, would you think cooler? Would you know immediately? Or would you think it was some kind of like, I don't know, not tackle box, but like a big gear box or something? I mean, that's what it yeah, looked like, like to me at first. Yeah, like some sort of military. Trunk? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah equipment box or yeah. something like that that's that was my first impression and i mean it's heavy well insulated yeah so empty it weighs the site says it weighs 64 pounds but um i i can't say if it does or not but i'll tell you it's heavy even empty but when it's full it can be really heavy but you and i managed it really well together i mean i never felt like oh my god i can't lift this thing up yeah 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 so what did you think about um, how it did with using the Blue Eddy AC200 Max? Did you feel like it powered it sufficiently? Or even when we plugged it into the camper, what did you think about that? 
oh, there's never really an issue um, inside the camper with the cover on. Um, we never saw like a significant drawdown. So um, that's got to be a testament to the insulation factor. Yeah. Um, and we didn't know like using it on AC, it works much less hard because it's not converting I to don't DC. even think it makes that big of a difference. Everything I've read says it needs to be AC or DC. And the main thing I noticed in my testing in the office was that when it was on AC, it would show, you know, a much higher, like up to 30, 30 volts, where on DC it would show 12 something. So I think it just depends on the system you're using. The system we have in the camper and the portable battery that we have can do either, which is a testament to this thing because it seems to run really efficiently on either setting. So never saw like huge power jumps, never um, saw like a big draw. Um. Yeah, the Blue Eddy, uh, we didn't see any significant drawdown. And then the camper has two uh, marine grade batteries. So, I mean, there's a lot of power. Right, and a 100 watt solar panel that we um, permanently attached basically to the roof and it charges while we're going down the highway, so. Plus, yeah, it charges from the truck too. Yeah, so while, there's a constant stream of power going to it. So I never I never worried about getting into the camper and not having lights the few days that we ran it solely from camper power. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I like the idea that uh, even around town, you know, most vehicles have a power outlet right these days um, you can plug it in it runs while you're driving you want to pick up groceries and that's um, a good point go do something else you know yeah um, yeah it's like around 107 here Fahrenheit oh my um, god that's why we're filming in the shade <clears throat> so uh, yeah when I'm shopping groceries are always last on the list and then I come straight home. But this, you know, uh, if you had other things to do, it'll hold a few groceries. More than a few? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, one cool thing about it is the height is actually made to be able to fit under a pickup bed's tonneau because I think those are usually around 19 inches tall, um, the beds, bed sides of the beds, and so that's kind of cool if you're like worried about somebody stealing it you can use the handles to tie it down or lock it down depending on what your application happens to be or whether it's sitting in the back of your truck all the time or not but um even though it is slightly rainproof and they they say light rainproof it shouldn't be left out in the weather all the time although i think putting the insulated bag on it might help a little with that sure but it's super important that if you do have it outside when it's raining you have it sitting high enough that rain or water that's gathering isn't going to get inside the vent. So just bear that in mind if you're keeping it in the back of your truck and you don't have a tonneau cover or a camper or something like that. I was laughing because when we were in that um, one campsite in Utah where I failed to take a picture of it, we drove by a guy's truck right. next to his camper and he had an ice co cooler. I think it may have been the size down from ours, sitting there in its insulated cover towards the front of his truck and in the back he had a it looked like maybe a hundred watt solar panel sitting there just running straight to the cooler so it was cool to see one out in the wild while we were in the middle of testing ours yeah yeah you want to uh, put the cover on it okay but first I want to ask is there anything about it that you don't like um it's heavy but I get it you know um, one person especially if it's got groceries in it uh or beverages um would be tough yeah it's some campers some campers some coolers come with wheels but this one isn't really meant to be moved around so much so it's kind of a if you can set it and leave it type thing in fact they even sell rails on the um ice coast site where you can install it in your truck and then pull it out on the rails and that makes it a little easier than having to pick it up and move it type thing but that's still with the idea that you're leaving it somewhere instead of moving it constantly which is exactly what we wound up having to do because we couldn't leave it in our camper because our camper is basically the size of a queen-size bed when it's made up 
but when we traveled, we could put it in the camper. So it generally sat outside while we were using it, unless we were traveling, and then we'd put it back inside when it was time. All right, so you wanted to put the cover on? Sure. Let's do it. One of the great things about the cover is that these little plastic caps right here, we have these gaskets around the doors of our camper that I was a little bit worried we're gonna get sliced up by those hard edges. On the bottom of the ice cove, there are four convex feet made out of metal, and they aren't gonna really mess anything up. They're very, um, here, let me help in my part. They're not quite as sharp as this plastic ends are. Uh, yeah, we put it on wrong. <laughs> Let's get the, see what I, see what I mean? Yeah, here, just pick it up. Yep. Perfect. It needs to come towards me just a little. There we go. Good? Yeah, the second time putting this on was much easier. It does have a really nice fit. Yeah. Um, and the first time it, you know, being brand new and not stretched out at all, took a little bit. Yeah, but we got it sorted. But it goes on quickly and it's got openings to the vents you can still see what's going on here and um, one of the cool things about it too is it has this pocket on the side great place to put your AC and DC cords when you're not using them so that's the ice cove VL 60 cooler let us know what you think in the comments